Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. It would mean the world to me. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to apply vinyl on top of a tie-dyed shirt. I see the question a lot and I really wanted to address it because you absolutely can add HTV to tie-dyed shirts. It's really fun and really easy. I made this really fun one for the video today and it's Frozen themed. It's one of my favorite movies and I watched it a ton. So I wanted to have a shirt that would match. Now this is a spirit jersey style shirt that they have at Disney. You can get these on Jiffy shirts. I will link them down below. They're really popular and pretty inexpensive for what they are. And you can add any design that you want. You can tie dye them, leave them plain, whatever you want. But we are gonna make this one an Arendelle Frozen themed shirt. And you're gonna be able to download the SVG for this little crown on my website for free for you guys. I used Tulip brand tie dye to tie dye this and I'll link the exact kit that I used down below. It was really easy to work with and really, really fun. And it was a great way to spend some extra time to tie dye some shirts. So we're gonna head over to Design Space and I'm gonna show you guys how to make this really fun shirt. I will also have a link down below for this font. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do for our design that we're gonna make is to download this Ice Kingdom font. So all we're gonna do is click download right there and it's gonna ask us where we wanna save it. Now I'm pretty organized so I keep all of my fonts in a font folder and then I click save. Now it's gonna come in a zipped folder, which is totally fine. What we're gonna do is open that folder and click the words extract all right here at the top. We're gonna click browse and then take this back into our fonts folder. Go ahead and click select the folder and then click extract down here at the bottom. Once it's done extracting, it's gonna open the folder that you put it in so that you can install your font. It's really important that you restart your Cricut Design Space after you install a font or just make sure it's closed when you install your font. So I'm gonna go ahead and into my Cricut Design Space and just close it out. And then you're gonna to wanna to do the open type font. I always remember that one, the OTF as open this font. So that's the one that you wanna install. All you need to do is right click on the font. Up at the top, it should say install for all users. Go ahead and click that and it will install your font. Now what I do just to keep myself organized is select the zipped folder and the two fonts and just pull those into my installed folder. That way I know I've put them in and I don't have to worry about trying to remember if I've installed a font or not. Now we're gonna go over into Cricut Design Space. Over in Cricut Design Space, we'll be able to find our font now. So let's just type out the word that we wanna use. And I wanna do Arendelle which is the name of the town from Frozen because we're doing a Frozen themed spirit jersey. So I just like to double check my spelling. And what I'm gonna do is under font, over here towards the right side, click the word system fonts. And we know that it was called Ice Kingdom. So you can just search for the word ice. It'll bring up anything that has the word ice in it. So you have pumpkin spice, juice, and then the Ice Kingdom. Go ahead and select the Ice Kingdom font. Now with this one, we're gonna make it way bigger than what it is because we have a lot of space that we can fill on our spirit jersey. So I'm gonna make this really, really big. You can go up to 24 inches wide on the large, which is what I have, and about 12 inches tall. Now, the letters seem really spaced out to me and I don't really love how spaced out they are. So I'm gonna use the letter spacing and space them down a little bit more and I think I'm gonna ungroup them a little bit maybe, but I'm just gonna look at it and see if I like that. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I think that looks fine. But you can use the letter spacing right here at the top or you can ungroup them over on the right hand side. So once you've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and make these pretty big. I think I'm just gonna make them as big as design space will allow. So the biggest you can cut is 23.5 inches wide. I'll go ahead and zoom this out so you can see it fully, but this is what's gonna go on the back of our spirit jersey. Now you can curve these a little bit if you would like to. Um, most of the time on a spirit jersey, they are not curved. They look curved when you put them on, but they're not actually curved if you lay them out flat. So keep that in mind 
If you want to make this look like a true spirit jersey, they don't curve them, but you are welcome to do whatever design and however you want to do it. Now, I'm going to offer you guys on my website this free SVG. I just traced over this. It's nothing exciting. It's just a crown, but it is the Elsa crown. And this is what's going to go on that front um, left pocket side for our design. So I'm going to make this about four and a half inches wide. That's usually about how large you want to do a pocket design. And we're also doing this with puff vinyl. So you do want to make sure it's big enough that you'll still be able to see a lot of the details in it. You can go a little bit bigger if you want. It's just personal preference and how you want to do it. Um, there's no right or wrong way to make one of these. There's no right or wrong way to do any of this. It's just whatever you like. So we're going to cut this on puff HTV, which is an iron on product, which means we need to mirror the design. So I like to pre mirror mine. I like to flip mine on my canvas before I use the canvas to mirror it. I think it's just a little bit easier and I tend to remember it better. Plus it doesn't give design space the chance to mess it up. So what I'm going to do is if you go to the top, you'll see the word flip right here, kind of in the center. Click flip and you can tell it to flip it horizontal. And all that does is mirror your design. Now we technically don't need to mirror the crown because it's the same either way. So you can just leave the crown alone. Now we're cutting this on white puff vinyl. So it doesn't really matter what color you make your design on your canvas, just what color you put into your machine. So I'm gonna click make it so that you guys can see and you'll see that it's gonna tell us that at least one of our images is longer than 11.5 inches in height or width. Select OK to continue with a larger mat or cancel to return to the canvas to reduce the size. That's fine, we're cutting this on a long mat. We've got plenty of vinyl, so we'll just go ahead and click OK. And I'll show you, if you scroll down, you can see that it takes up the whole side here, which is fine. Now. Keep in mind that when you do this, that you want to just double check that everything is mirrored. I always double, double check just in case you never know, but I just check it. Everything looks good and mirrored and our crown is set. You can move the crown if you want to. You can make it sideways if you would prefer to save a little vinyl that direction. You can absolutely do that. It's up to you however you want to do it, but you can move things on your map. We're going to go ahead and click continue. Now, the product that I have that I've linked below for you guys, it cuts on the everyday iron-on setting. It's really easy to work with, and I think you guys will be really pleased with it. But again, I've linked it down below for you guys, but I've tested this a bunch, been really pleased with using the everyday iron-on setting. I'll take you guys over to the machine and show you how to load it, and then we can cut it. The puff of vinyl that I use does come on a pretty big roll so I do have to cut it down so I just cut it down into like a general seven inch strip it's not straight I can't cut the straight line to save my life so but I do have it on my extra long mat I'm just using my green one so we're just gonna go ahead and pull our Cricut in and again I have this set to everyday iron on I made sure to mirror it and it is carrier sheet side down for the vinyl you want to make sure that you know the difference between a carrier sheet and the vinyl side. It is shiny on this one, but it's not shiny on all of them. So I want to try to break you guys of the habit of saying shiny side down. So I'll let you guys go ahead and watch. Weeding this product is really, really easy. Honestly, it really weeds nicely, especially cut on that everyday iron on setting. So all I'm going to do is just use my pin pen and peel back and you'll see this stuff feels really thin. Um, that's one thing I like about it. As you're peeling it, it's super easy. You can see how easily this comes off. Really, really fun. So I'll go ahead and finish um, weeding all of this and then I'm going to show you guys how to apply it to your shirt. Once you've got everything weeded, you can bring your shirt in. Now again, I will link these down below. These are, I believe the J America brand. Let me double check for you because I don't want to be wrong. Yes, they are the J America brand. So this is what the tag looks like. 
But I got these on Jiffy Shirts, and everyone always asks me where I get these, and I get them on Jiffy Shirts. But I'll link them down below for you guys because these are awesome. So what I'm going to do is lay my shirt out. Now, I did tie-dye this one, so let me preface that. Um, you get them in a couple solid, they have a bunch of solid colors, and then they do have a couple tie-dyed versions. But I tied the dyed this one myself, so keep that in mind. You can't get this color combo. Um, People always ask me to do tie-dye tutorials, and honestly, they just accidentally happen when I tie-dye, so I can't even tell you how I did it, other than I put a rubber band here on this seam, and then I um, tie-dyed the top part one color blue, and then I did the bottom part this kind of um, dark blue, and then I accidentally got some purple on it, but it actually ended up looking pretty cool, so it's got like this little purple, like kind of brownie line, but that's okay. So. Please don't ask me to tie-dye something because it just happens by accident. So what I'm going to do is lay out my Arendelle to where I want it on my shirt. And this right now is just to kind of see where I want it, make sure it's kind of looking good. Because I've got some wrinkling under here from the um, shirt itself. So you want to make sure you lay out everything flat. Just make sure everything is good and flat. And I'll redo this when I put this on the heat press, but I just wanna make sure that that looks pretty good. The sizing is perfect. You guys can see, like when you do these spirit jerseys, you want them to take up a lot of space on the back. And you don't want them right up on the shoulders. You want them down a bit. Usually I try to center them between this seam right here and our collar. That way they have some space and you can move these around. One thing I like about the um, really nice sticky back on this is that it is really sticky. So I, if I don't like where I set that down, I can absolutely move it and it's still really, really. St so once you've kind of figured out where you want this place and you know that it fits, I'll replace it once I go over to the heat press. The reason I do that is mine tends to move around too much if I place it on my shirt and then try to move my shirt over to the heat press. So again, I just try to center it. I try to make sure it looks good. So I'm gonna take you over to the heat press and I'll show you how to do this. These press at 320 degrees with medium pressure for about 15 seconds and they are cold peel. So I'll go get the heat press all set up and get you guys over there to watch me heat press. Okay, so we're ready to press. So again, I have my heat press set to 320. I have it, the timer on. Now I did take my pressing pillow off because I wanted to have as much space as possible because this is such a large item. So again, we do have the seam off of the edge of our mat, except this seam, there's nothing I can do about that one. So we're gonna go ahead and press this down. Again, medium pressure for about 15 seconds, and we're gonna have to do this in two presses because we have to get the E-L-L-E -L -L -E for the next section. But don't worry, totally okay, no big deal. It's real easy to do. We're just gonna go ahead and let this bad boy count down. And then once this is done, we'll pull this up and we'll move it over and we'll press again. Now that it's done, it's gonna beep. Go ahead and pull that up and you'll start to see it puffing. Go ahead and just leave it be. Don't touch it, don't do anything with it, but you can see that it's starting to puff. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move this off. So I'm just gonna turn it very carefully and get it off of the heat press. Now I do have my window right here behind here, so it does kind of make this a little hard, but um, you just wanna make sure you gently move this over so that this part is off of your heat press and the E-L-L-E -L -L -E is gonna be on. And don't worry if it kind of pops up a little bit, it's okay, you can press it down. It's still held down over here, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. So what I'm gonna do is make sure this E-L-L-E -L -L -E part is all on my press. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and repress the D and the N since they're fitting on there anyways, and they'll be fine. Um, they didn't puff real good, so we're gonna see if we can get them to puff a little bit better using a little more of the heat. So we'll go ahead and press this one. We're gonna make sure this bottom seam is off and make sure everything is relatively flat so that we can give it a good press. Move this over just a little bit, okay. That looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and press it down. I'll speed this one up for you guys. Now 
Now that it's cooled, we can go ahead and peel this off. And this is such a cool product. It's so fun. It just feels really fun. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go ahead and flip this over. And don't worry, you won't damage the vinyl on the back. This part of your press, this bottom plate, doesn't get hot, just the top one. And you're not gonna damage the puff vinyl underneath. So what I'm gonna do is try to line this up so it's a little bit easier for me to see what is straight. So I'm just making sure that my seam that goes across the center of the shirt is straight. And then I wanna get any wrinkles out from the back that I can. Just make sure my seam is still straight. And I wanna make sure this is good and flat because we're gonna press down our princess now. So what I do is I don't, I'm not, listen, I'd love to tell you that I am great at placing these little corner pieces, but I'm not. I'm real bad at them actually. So I just kind of eyeball it, but there are measurements that you can take and uh, work with. But for me, I just kind of eyeball it and pray. But pretty good right these shirts do fit a little bit loose and a little bit big which is good um, that's how they're supposed to fit but I will say that placing these types of things gives me anxiety so if you have anxiety measure but it's okay it's shirts just for me so we'll do the same thing we'll go ahead and press it's gonna press for about 15 to 20 seconds again this is right next to my window so it's always getting in the way but we're gonna go ahead and press this again 320 medium pressure We'll let this press. I'm gonna pull this up just a few seconds before that 20 second mark, um, just because I think it works a little bit better if it's not like the full 20 on it. I feel like it puffs a little bit better. So this is a product that you definitely just wanna kind of test out, play around with a little bit before you really commit. So I'm gonna let this cool. While this cools, I'll move you guys back over to the table and I'll show you guys what this looks like. our finished shirt. This was really fun to make and honestly really really easy. And don't forget that you can get the SVG for the little crown on the front at my website corinneblackstone.com. Totally free. Just go there, download that. It's super easy and fun to do. This was a really really fun project. The tie-dyeing didn't take very long at all and like I said, Tie-dyeing kind of is a trial and error thing and there's no wrong way to do it. So just jump in and give it a shot. I had so much fun making this. I really enjoy the puff vinyl as well. So if you guys are looking for any of the cool puff vinyl, that's linked down below for you guys in the video description. Here's the shirt on. I wanted you guys to see how it sits on my shoulders. You'll note again that you don't wanna put it at the very top of the shirt. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Have a great day and happy crafting.